So we're here with Mars tonight. Um, Hendon, 1-0 up, and we came back 2-1. Um, game originally wasn't a 2-1 game, was it? Uh, I'm not so sure about that, to be honest, Charles. When you actually analysed the game, I thought we were really, really poor in the first half. I didn't think we got near them whatsoever. Um, they won more battles than us. They basically run harder than us. Um, all over the pitch, we were second best in the first half. There's no question about that. We created a couple of half chances. Um, they've obviously scored from a corner, which is disappointing in the second phase. Um, but um, on the whole, in that first half, we were absolute. We were miles away. Um, and what did you say at half time then? Because something clearly happened. Because yeah. there was a massive difference. It was yeah. It was discussed at half time. Obviously, the boys know. The, the boys don't really need us to tell them, but we did. Uh, they know we were nowhere near the standards that we've set. Um, one thing I would say: we, we were bad. We were awful. We didn't get out of the traps whatsoever. Hendon, uh, Hendon did play well. They um, they really did. They uh, like I said, they run a lot harder than us. They won more duels than us. And at times they got into some threatening areas where I'm thinking if they get another, it's you know it could be game over. But what is really important and something that these lads have credit to them have done tonight is they've stuck in the game, which they did in the first half. And when you're not playing well, it's important that you stick in the game. And we did that. Got to half time, and then I thought after the second half, uh, after the half time, I thought I always felt we were going to go on and score um, with the boys that we have in the final third. A couple of changes, I must say, they made a they made a huge difference, and they added some real quality. And we got our goals in the end. And really, it could have been a couple more when you actually analyse it. Well, I think it all goes at both posts, um, and we've missed a couple of other opportunities where on another day they they go in. Um, so what's really important to take out of tonight is that you know we've got to realise we've got to learn from the first half that we're not going to get given anything. In this league, so if you think you can just turn up and, and stroll around like we did in the first half, we'll come unstuck. And on another day, that might have been two or three nil, and the game's over. So we've got away with that on that front. But then credit to the lads, they dug in and they've turned out and put a second half performance that, in my opinion, was worthy then of the victory. Yeah, bit of, bit of a change as well uh, in the way we played, formation and stuff tonight. Uh, thoughts around that? Yeah, look, formation, we always want to be able to adapt and, and play different shapes. Um, and tonight was just one of those. It was dictated a little bit by personnel, you know, when you actually analyse it. We, we've had a few not available tonight in Rolfie and Callum. Casey wasn't fit enough to start. Um, Bruno was unavailable and I think there's one more in there somewhere. Um, so we had to adapt and, and we, we still felt that we put a side out that was more than capable. This squad is, is in a really good shape that whatever starting eleven we pick, we feel is good enough to go and win that football match. It was just unfortunate that we didn't get out of traps in the first half and uh, we wasn't quite good enough but they did match it in the second half. Yeah, as you say, you know, came close with the, the double hitting of the post and stuff. But who was your standout performance tonight? Second half. Um, second half. I thought the boys got to grips with the middle of the park a little bit better in the second half. I thought, um, I thought first half they probably got the better of us in there. Um, Tosh and Rushy did get to grips with it in the second half and that made a difference and I feel once you yeah. once you do that and the back four defended um, their front boys in you know in Joe White and uh, Nico they're, they're for me one of the you know top two centre forwards in the league so they defended them a little bit better as well which then gives us the platform and if it gives our front boys a platform to go and do what they do they're, they're, they're dangerous against anyone in this league and once they Got their rhythm in the second half and their combinations. You know, there were certain times that they really did look good and they, they opened them up quite a lot. Uh, Zaki and Goldfrost um, made the difference as well. Yeah, Zaki, look, Zaki, Zaki's a top keeper. We've all said that. His distribution again tonight was outstanding. I think he's in one bad kick. Um, and, and that's a massive, massive thing for us as well because that supply that goes into the front men from Zaki is, is massive because it gets us up the pitch. And with our target men that we do have, uh, it gives us a chance to, you know, get around them and get on the second balls and, uh, you know, enter their their, fight, their defending third or attacking third um, on numerous occasions. And, you know, yeah, I, I can't really remember him making many saves, but um, his decision making and sweeping up and and reading the game is, is spot on. So, look, 
we're always going to need Zaki in certain periods of the football match and, and tonight was no different. So it's good to uh, get three points and put the uh, the league games to to one side for a bit. But before we go on to uh, Saturday, um, saw uh, Brad running out there this evening. Um, do you want to give us an update on some of the injured boys there? Yeah, so Brad and Rod. Uh, Brad's been running now for about three weeks and we, we've had no no reaction, um, which is which is great news. It's early days, but you know, in a, a week, two weeks, we'll be, we'll be seeing where he is again. Um, and we all know how, what Brad offers, but it's important we don't rush him. It's important and we take our time with him and look, Matty's, Matty's the best of that. Matty will know and he'll guide us when we when we can push him a bit more and get him back into training. I think we are looking to non-contact training next week. Um, so that, let's not rush it, but yeah. you know, if we can get Brad back November, December time, and we get him anywhere near the capabilities that he has got, he's going to be like a brand new signing for the football club. And um, Roddy? And Roddy, look, again, we're being very, very patient with him. He's had a massive injury. He's been so dedicated to get where he, uh, where he is. He's such a fit lad, but he's in really good shape. Again, touch wood, he's not feeling no reaction. He's working really hard and uh, not putting no time scales on it just yet, Giles. We'll, we'll see how week by week goes and we'll be guided by Matty. But again, if he, if he continues and everything's okay, if, when he gets back fit, it'll be like a brand new signing. So good things to look forward to, but let's, uh, let's talk about Saturday. Cray, trophy. Yeah, a uh, tough fixture, I would say it's you know, before Saturday, we had two league games that we, you know, we really had to focus on, and our aim was to get six points. To, to come out of the other side with six points is, you know, a really good achievement from the lads. Uh, it gives us a break now uh, for, to go into the FA Trophy, which yeah, will be a tough game. Um, we will need a, we will need our squad because the boys have had some games, um, so we're going to have to utilise that. And then um, obviously, then after that game, we'll be looking at the following game where we got Maidstone. Yeah, um, I think a lot more people are talking about Maidstone than Cray, but uh, yeah. we, we won't worry about that. Let's talk on Saturday after the game and all the best. Cheers. Cheers.